Hey everybody, this is Dr. Raul with Tech for Psych. So I was getting ready for some neuromarketing videos with the Emotive Insight and I was having connectivity issues. Basically the device wasn't getting good EEG signal for my scalp anymore. And I tried a couple of different things and ended up with one solution that seemed to have solved the problem and decided I would make a video about it. But real fast, if you like this type of information and want to learn more and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. All right, let's roll into the content and see what I found out. All right, as you can see, I've got my old and trusted Emotive Insight on my head right now, the white one. And I've got about three to four good years of use out of this. Um, traveled with it, used it in remote locations, um, really tinkered around with it. But unfortunately, it seems to have lost its connectivity. As you can see on the app here on my iPad, it's just bouncing around in connectivity and really not getting a good signal at all. So the question is, when you have connectivity issues, what is the solution? Well, the first thing that you can do is try to reset your computer, reset the app. Um, I typically find that it's easier when you have the device already on and admitting the Bluetooth signal before you even turn the app on because as soon as the My Emotive app comes up, it looks for devices and it should come up on the pairing so that you can just select it and it pairs with the device and then you can put it on your head and get the connectivity going. And from there you can make little adjustments on your scalp, just making sure that it is actually touching your scalp and not being blocked by hair follicles. Especially on the top sensor on top of your head right here, you really have to work it down in beneath uh, the hair follicles to the scalp to where it actually can pick up the voltage changes that are happening in your brain that are transmitted through the scalp. Another important thing is just making sure that the reference electrodes behind your ear are flush with the skin so that it can ground the device, allowing it to detect voltage changes from your brain. Another quick point I wanted to make about the Emotive Insight is that for some reason, the on light is a little uh, misleading. There's a, a backlight here behind the power switch button that lights up when you're actually charging the device, but when you push the button, it actually doesn't come on and off. It's a little yellow light. The light that actually signifies whether the device is on is up in front of the emotive signal. And it's actually below the plastic, so it's not as uh, prominent as a light as the one in the back that signifies it's charging. Not sure why they designed it like that, and it can be a little hard to find that little light that comes on in front of the emotive sign. So just make sure you're aware that that's where the light is and can tell you whether the device is actually on or not if you're having connectivity issues. One option available is if you've had the device for some time and you feel like the sensor tips have been dried out, you can order new ones quite easily from the Emotive website for $50. Definitely an option to consider if you've had the device for some time. Now if you're really ambitious, you can actually open up the Emotive Insight casing and take a look at the circuit board. For a tutorial on that, take a look at my last week's video, Inside the Emotive Insight. I did notice on mine that the reference electrode connection was actually loose and I'm actively looking into fixing that. It probably was the reason why my Emotive Insight wasn't working in terms of connectivity. And unfortunately, in the end, I just had to order a new Emotive Insight. It's probably not the uh, quick fire solution that most people were looking for on this video, but it's the story and I wanted to tell it. Um, the Emotive Insight White was actually out of stock on the website, which I take as a good sign that the company is doing well. Um, I, so I got a black one, which is actually kind of neat. It's just a little bit different from the other one. And it definitely fixed the connectivity issues. I just literally put it on my head for this video and paired it up and it was at 90%. And with a little adjustment on this electrode, I was up to 100 and it's, uh, you know, kind of bouncing back and forth between 90 and 100% should be uh, showing 100% right there on the iPad right now. So yeah, writing at 100% right now, ready to do my neuromarketing videos. Um, there's the brain firing going on right there. The Emotive app is actually really cool if you take a look at it. So there's some definite things that I noticed that are different between my new Emotive Insight Black and my old Emotive Insight White is that one of the most major differences is this one is much more tight on my head. And if you look at the shape, it's actually a lot more curvature and tight, as you can imagine, to get the sensors more flush with my scalp. That's one thing that I noticed immediately about the new one. Let's take a look at the black one and notice that the curvature is a lot more tight than the white one. The other thing I noticed between the two is that the black one, the, the sensors have a lighter green color than, than the white one and appear actually more moist and higher up off of the sensor. So it, it does look like that 
the, the sensors had been dehydrated on this one. And if I look at this one and replace it with the, the new uh, black electrodes that I had tried to use with it, I noticed as well that the new black electrodes are a lighter green color. They appear to be more hydrated. They just look moist compared to it. But as we talked about, replacing the white sensors with the black sensors on, on this motive didn't solve the problem. Some other things I was thinking about this guy, you know, hindsight's 2020, but you know, when you transport these things, I would, you know, disconnect the back sensor like this and put it in a soft bag that I'd be carrying it around. But I just wonder if the compression in, in my backpack sort of uh, had it lose its rigidity over time. The other thing is I hadn't hydrated the electrodes for at least the first two years that I had the device. So maybe some more regular rehydrating would have kept the sensors a little bit more um, hydrated so that they didn't wear out as much. But again, the black sensor didn't solve the electrode problem. So I'm, I'm really not sure. So maybe just getting a hard case to transport your insight so that it, it doesn't lose its rigidity of the plastic and then also preserves the electronics inside might be a solution. So if you guys have comments or thoughts about this, um, please leave them in the video below. Please like, subscribe, comment. I really appreciate your time. If you're interested in more videos like this, again, subscribe and I'm gonna have more videos coming out on Emotive, Muse, any other EEG devices, other mobile technology, and just general thoughts on health and wellness. All right, so that's all I had for you guys today. Comment, like, check out my other videos. The content is really like like this we're exploring these technologies and really getting into it so thanks so much for the listen I'll talk to you again soon